talking about uh, the whole issue of <coughs> intervention, we're at a point where it's almost difficult to take the subject seriously the way we did, uh, for instance, uh, seven, eight years ago, because of the Iraq War, because the reasons for it are so much more clear than they were um, back in the days leading up, leading up to the war. Um, but if we remember those times, there were uh, a lot of arguments that we may have had with people who were uh, swayed by the idea that maybe it was in the best interest of Iraqis to not be living under a dictator, um, and as indeed uh, they deserved and deserve to do. And uh, we were also reading a lot of newspaper articles and media articles about um, the potential for nuclear weapons in Iraq, etc., etc. Uh, so when, it, when we think about these questions, we always have to ask ourselves, what kind of facts do we have to base our decisions on? What kind of information are we dealing with? Uh, so I'm speaking here as a, as a journalist, as a writer, and uh, so the media is the sphere that I tend to think about a lot because that's the vehicle through which we get our information. And uh, clearly what we got leading up to the Iraq War and, uh, and uh, the beginning of that war was a lot of propaganda that now it, it seems uh, we don't even have to think about. We know that, that there weren't weapons of mass destruction. We know that a lot of those things aren't true. Um, in terms of uh, intervention, I... I wish we would put some emphasis on uh, dealing with the, the human cost of the war now. Um, as the play was going on and um, uh, the actor who played the Iraqi woman was talking about the ghosts, uh, I was thinking about the, the people that I met in, when I was living in Syria specifically, in, in Jordan. Uh, the Iraqis and the way that they would talk about their their parents, their siblings, the people who had been killed around them, um, and the fact that a lot of them seemed to me like ghosts. Their whole old lives were like ghosts that they were that they were carrying around with them. Uh, one of the things that I did, I, I, I was living largely in the slums of Damascus, where most of the Iraqis are in Syria. There's about a million and a half of them uh, there right now. And um, I was living in that area, so I would spend time, spend my days with the Rockies and listen to their stories. And a lot of them are, 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 are quite horrific, and I'm not going to tell those stories right now. Um, but one of the things I was also doing was, was uh, practicing Arabic with, um, with the, one of the widows there. And there were, I met many widows. Uh, there's a, around the two million widows in Iraq right now as a result of this war. And so many of them are also among the refugees. And this one in particular was teaching me Arabic, and her name was Um Sali, the mother of Sali, her, her, her only daughter. And Um Sali, would, when she would teach me words, she would often go into stories at the same time. So we were, uh, we were saying a sentence in which the word beautiful was used, and she said, um, uh, my husband was so beautiful. And, uh, and then she said, uh, we were practicing the verb to forget, and she said, I, 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 can't, I can't forget him. And she, uh, we were using the verb to love, I love, you love, he loves, she loves. And she said that all of my life is destroyed, what am I going to do? And that is, those are the ghosts that the Iraqis are living with right now. I think if we're going to intervene, groups like uh, Médecins Sans Frontières that go in and give medical treatment to, to anyone who needs them, pouring our resources into these kinds of useful um, uh, and non-political, apolitical aid, uh, anything that strengthens civil society, the kind of society where people have access to education so that they can improve and empower in their own situations, uh, anywhere that we can um, support those kinds of grassroots initiatives, non-governmental initiatives, try pouring a trillion dollars a year into things like that, and we can see positive change that won't involve any kind of munitions whatsoever. Um, so these are things to think about. Right now, 
a lot of us are, uh, obviously the people, everyone here is pretty much put off war, but so are those who supported the Iraq war at the beginning. There's a lot of, 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 of disgust of, of, of with those arguments at this point. But in the next five or ten years, we will probably be back in the same point, where we're once again faced with a situation where there's good versus evil being put on the front page of the newspapers in front of us. And we will have to remember these lessons right now and find ways of supporting uh, alternative uh, to solutions to the problems and recognize uh, that the motives of those who may be uh, making us uh, concerned, afraid, or even uh, believing that this is the best way to help people on the other side of the world, that their motives may not be pure. And we have to ask those questions and do, do our own uh, homework and due diligence in, um, in finding the answers.